So this video is going to be about Michael K. Williams, Michael Kenneth Williams, all right? A lot of y'all know him as Omar Little from The Wire or Chalky from Boardwalk Empire. Um, so this brother just passed recently in the Williamsburg area of Brooklyn from what appears to be a drug overdose. Um, for me, that brother was iconic. Uh, he was an iconic actor. For me, I love The Wire. Anybody that watched The Wire knows his character, Omar. So Omar was the stick-up boy in The Wire. The Wire is highly known as probably like the best ever hood series, like the most realistic. They got it right with The Wire. So there was a stick-up dude named Omar. He used to go around with a shotgun, sort off shotgun trench coat. He'd be whistling. Um, you would hear him whistling. And listen, people would run in terror when they hear him whistling. They'd start throwing the drugs out the window. He wouldn't even, you know, he had this one scene where he was knocking on the door, lit up a cigarette and was like, yo, don't make me huff and puff this, huff and puff and blow this house down. You know, basically saying I'm the big bad wolf. Give me that shit or I'm coming in there. They threw him out the drugs. Um, so if you haven't seen The Wire, go check out The Wire. Um, so he died from what appears to be a heroin overdose. They said, you know, where, where he passed away in his Brooklyn home. Um, they guess they went to do a wellness check on him because his family didn't hear from him for a couple days. When they get to his house, they find him dead with drug paraphernalia um, around him. That's why they come to the conclusion that it's a heroin overdose. Um, and then mind you, there was three other actors that died in Los Angeles the day before from sniffing cocaine laced with fentanyl. So pictured right here is Fuquan Johnson, who was a comedian, a stand-up comic. Um, he was one of the three people that passed away that day due to the overdose. There was also someone else named Enrico Colangeli, uh, 48 years old, Natalie Williamson, 33, that also passed away. So it was the three of them. And there is a fourth uh, person, Kate Quigley, that she had overdosed. Um, luckily, she didn't die, so she's still in the hospital. Um, so I say that to say this. There's a couple points I want to make in this video is Michael K. Williams, he was a millionaire. Um, the other actors in Hollywood, they, you know, they weren't A-list actors, they were comedians, um, you know, so they weren't A-list actors. And I only make that point to say this, that listen, these are people that you would think would have the best connections, right? You would think that if anybody was gonna buy drugs on the street and get what they pay for it would be these people right because they have you know they don't have to go and buy drugs from from the street corner you know um you would think that they would get what they pay for right like the the comedians that died from the 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 overdose where they got fentanyl with cocaine um Think about that. Nobody's gonna buy fentanyl and expect, I mean, nobody's gonna buy cocaine and expect there to be fentanyl in there. Um, so that's crazy. It just goes to show that no matter who we are, no matter how much money we got, how much prestige, how famous we are, um, we can 100% fall victim to addiction and to the ills of addiction, which, so when we're in active addiction, right we go we buy drugs um and it's true we never really know what we're getting we just have faith in that stamp or have faith in a person that we've dealt with them before and everything went well so in the future the times we deal with them everything will go well again the sad reality is that's not the way it goes um Listen, when I was selling drugs, there was plenty of times, plenty of times, um, that 
So I would have certain people that I would go see on a regular basis, right? Now, if one of those people wasn't around or didn't have work that time that I was going to re-up, I'd go find another one. I'd go find another connect, right? And I'm not taking nobody to do, you know, uh, quality control tests and stuff like that. I'm buying it, I'm taking them at face value that what they say they're giving me is what they're giving me. Mind you, they got it from somebody else who they're working on the honor system as well. And that's, to be honest with you, when you're dealing with drugs, as crazy as it sounds, that's sort of what it is, the honor system. I'm gonna give you what you ask money-wise and you give me what I ask product-wise. So if I come to buy dope from you, right, heroin, I want it to be heroin. I don't want it to be coke. I don't want it to be trash heroin. I want it to be heroin. Um, if I buy coke from you, I want it to be coke. If I buy weed from you, I want it to be weed. So it's all honor system. They're trusting us to give them what they want money-wise, and we're trusting them to give us what we want and need product wise um, but let me tell you 90% of the people that are selling drugs uh, they didn't try those drugs them, themselves especially at a high level you know once you're you're buying weight um, those people you're buying weight from they didn't try that shit. you know they're trusting somebody else the same way you're trusting them and that's the way it goes. It's like baking a cake, right? This is the, when people ask, how can this happen? I always try to analogize it like this, right? Let's say you're baking a cake, right? Let's say the heroin is the flour. So you have, the majority of it is heroin, right? 75% is the heroin. 25% is cut. So they've just mixed that all up mix it up real good right sometimes we'll put it in coffee grinders sometimes we'll put it in blenders to mix it up all right then when we scoop it to buy bags on a street level we scoop it to package up bags we're scooping from that pot that we mixed up right 100% guaranteed there's going to be bags that are more cut than dope and there's going to be bags that are more dope than cut there's going to be bags that are strictly cut there's going to be bags that are strictly dope now when we start getting into the fentanyl that's where it creates a problem because it takes a very minuscule amount of fentanyl to kill you right so you could use the same amount of heroin and be fine but if you use that amount in fentanyl, you're gone. You can use the same amount and cut. You know, let's just say 0.1 of a gram. You could use 0.1 of a gram in heroin and be fine. Have the best high of your life. You can use 0.1 of fentanyl and be dead. You could use 0.1 of cut and be upset because you didn't get as high. Um, you know, so it always amazes me when we see these people, Mac Miller and Prince and Michael K. Williams and all these super, super stars, right? That die from drugs and they get bad batches. So if they get bad batches, right? And they have endless amounts of money. What do you think we get when we go to the streets, right? What do you think we get when we go to Kensington and buy drugs? What do you what do you think we get when we go to Badlands and buy drugs? What do you think we get? Right? And I'll be one to tell you when I was selling drugs, I didn't care what I gave. Um, as long as I got my money, I didn't care. You know, and, and this is me being 100% honest with you. I didn't care what happened to the person. Did I want you to die? No. 
because essentially that's bad for business. So I didn't want you to die, but you know, have we push work that, you know, on a corner and find out, yo, there's people ODing a hundred percent that's happened. Um, anybody that has sold drugs long enough, that has happened, especially when you're dealing with heroin. Um, so just be mindful, man. Nothing we're buying off the street is FDA approved. Nothing we're buying off the street is quality controlled. Nothing we're buying off the street is safe. Um, the quickest way to lose our life is to continue to purchase these drugs off the street, right? And what's the solution? I don't know. Best solution I know is stop using drugs. Easier said than done. Um, so we have to think about that. You know, we're trusting somebody else with what we're buying. And then we're trusting that what we buy, you know, doesn't have some adverse effect with our system, right? Where we can have two people, we can have 10 people. Everybody does the same amount from the same dose and everybody's fine except for one person. It just didn't work with their system and they're dead. Think about that, right? Think about how sad that is. These brothers had, you know, millions of people that were fans of theirs that appreciated their their art, whether it's acting or comedy, hundreds and thousands and millions of people, you know, think about that. Um, they're gone, they're gone. They're gonna fit in the casket like the rest of us. And it's sad. Um, so rest in peace. And um, watch those series, man. If you didn't watch The Wire, go watch The Wire. I 100% you'll enjoy it. It's the closest thing to the actual streets as I've, as I've ever seen um, in like a docu-series. 100%. Thanks. Remember to be kind, loving, patient. Have a great day.